Alright, welcome back folks. It looks like the videos are finally recording correctly without any uh, distortions or other problems. So I think I, I can have them be a bit longer now. So we're going to continue where we left off. Um, we're going to look at our manifest, see our cargo. We can see how much we have. We have uh, plenty of space available, so we don't need to go back to our star base at the current time. Uh, let's see. I don't know what devices are. I'm not sure what that does, but okay. So we'll go back to navigation. We'll go... Oh, wrong way. Uh, <laughs> I did not mean to go back to Europa. We can go to Jupiter. We can go to Jupiter. I don't know why I didn't then, but okay. Uh... I have tried that out before. I know you can go. Yeah, same. You can go to Jupiter. You can do a scan. It's the I think the higher the class number on the weather, the uh, the worse it is. Uh, so basically, that means you know there's nothing here, and if I try to dispatch it. I can't do that. So you can't do anything in Jupiter. But that's okay. We're going to... Uh, try to go here. Which one's this? This is Ganymede. So we're going to auto-scan. These things aren't very valuable, but we'll go ahead and grab them. We're here. The blue is the uh, least valuable, but uh, it appears that it's pretty safe. We are getting a lot of them, I suppose. Yeah, th these are big deposits of this low value. Uh, commodity, but that's okay. Go ahead and grab it. Go ahead and get the uh, rest of the stuff on this planet. Or this moon, anyway. You probably will try to finish off getting the stuff from Mercury and uh, Venus as well. Even though, especially Venus is tough, I'm not sure how much I'm going to do that. <laughs> it's Venus is really rough on the weather. Alright, before we continue, let's see how much we have left. We've got plenty. Which is why, you know... I definitely wanted to make sure we had an extra cargo bay before we started really going and doing all this stuff. What plan what moon is this? Callisto. Well, that's useless. Very good. I think there's only one more thing to go to in this particular system. And that's uh, Io. I think this is Io. Yeah. Now Io, if you know anything about your uh, stuff, is more uh, active than some of the planets, or some of the moons in the solar system. It's got some very valuable stuff on it, but we will have to dodge substantial amounts of of that. You gotta be very careful. You gotta pay attention. If you look, 
there is some sort of a, a little tell that it's coming out. It's sort of like a white color. Oh! Uh, I keep forgetting you can only go forward, so it's kind of awkward, I'm going to admit. We lost four crew members there. Oh well. This is not as bad as Mercury. This is far enough away, I want to go ahead and just fly off. Especially on these dangerous ones, I don't think it's worth just running around. If it's far away, you might as well just come off and go back to it. Now, I don't know, that might use some fuel, but it doesn't seem like the fuel is all that expensive. Alright, we've almost got it. Although I guess it could be good practice to go ahead and, uh... Uh, yeah, forget that. It's, you know, you can't, there's no reverse on this thing. If there was, like, that's, I keep accidentally trying to do reverses. Um, but they don't actually allow you to reverse for some reason. So it's like, before you can get away from something, you actually have to either, you have to turn. Oh, turn it! You actually have to turn. Um, well that wasn't really the best, but okay. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, exit here, go back to navigate. We've basically cleared out the Jupiter system. So let's go out here. If I get to, uh, 20 crew members or less, I will go ahead and, uh, head back. But for now... Let's go ahead and take a, uh... look at, uh, what is this, Uranus? Or, it doesn't look like Saturn to me, it must be Uranus. I don't know. Titan, huh? Nope. Oh, got some cheap minerals. No bases. No life. Well, that's fine. I'll go ahead and, uh, grab these. I think it's a relatively safe place. Oh, whoa. That's a new one. Yeah, if you stand still, it might get you. But we still have enough crew members that it won't matter that much, I guess. I've never seen... This is okay. That's the first time I saw the electrical activity. Yeah, I think it does use fuel. It definitely uses fuel. If, uh... When you go to and from the surface of a planet. So you, you kind of have to manage that, I suppose. At least I think it uses fuel. Go up here. Yeah, I don't know why this, the picture of Saturn doesn't have rings. Whoa. Oh, come on. It's more than a little bit unfair. Alright, that looks like it's pretty good. Exit menu. I'm going to go ahead and save. Um, I'll go ahead and save it as 3B. Uh, I did have some recording trouble, so... But uh, I'm just going to record over that one that I had done. Let's go ahead and head towards Saturn. Yeah, there's no rings here. That's kind of odd. And like Jupiter, there's absolutely nothing. Not that I'm surprised, but uh, I think we have enough fuel we can go and head out to one more system before heading back to the base.
And we will. We're gonna go here. To, I believe, Neptune. Here's Neptune, but uh, what? Triton. So it's a class two. Looks like it's got a few, uh, not too much, but it has some things we can grab. I don't know what class two means. I would expect that it means it's okay. As far as the weather goes. Yeah, I think class two is pretty safe. get there. We'll go check out Neptune, although I'm sure it's the same as the other gas giants. With basically nothing that you can do with it. Yeah, class 8, I think class 8 means you're not going to be able to go to it no matter what. There's no going to Neptune under any circumstances. We're going to exit that menu, we're going to go back to navigation, and uh, I don't know, we have enough fuel. As long as we don't leave the solar system, we should be alright. Alright. I do have to be careful, I don't want to go accidentally go out into hyperspace. This is, uh, I think, Uranus? Uranus? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Why is this not working? Go slow. You'd think going right over it like that would, uh... Uranus doesn't have any moons? I guess it doesn't. I don't know. I thought it did, but... Alright, that was pointless. There's no moons around it. So we can just go uh, check out Pluto. And that should be the last planet in the solar system. You know, back in 1992, they still thought Pluto was a planet, so... Hopefully we can grab some stuff from it. Well, that's nice, look at that one thing. Oh, there's a base! Oh, I wonder what that is. We need to go check that out. I'm gonna save before I do, though. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll take a risk. I'll take a walk on the wild side. We'll go check out this base. <laughs> on Mayday from surface. We have come under fire from an alien vessel we found hiding on the surface of Pluto. Captain, they killed Kamalski, <laughs> Fates, Chin, O'Donnell, Luigi, and all three of the Lieberman triplets. <laughs> we have returned fire, but our stunner can't penetrate the ship's hull armor. We are initiating emergency launch procedures. End of transmission. Oh, that's wild. Attention, a big mean hostile alien vessel hovering overhead in an obvious attack posture. This is Spotty Captain Swiffle. I know you are going 
to torture me, so let's just get this over with right now. The coordinates of my home world, Batewa, are 241.6 by 368.7, and the ultra secret Spatty Cipher, which is known only by me and several billion other Spatty, is Happy Muffy Duffy. Sorry about that little mistake with your landing vehicle. I was uh, so startled when it approached my vessel in a threatening manner that uh, my automated defense system fired on it when it got too close. I hope nobody got hurt. Uh. Huh. All right. So what I decided to do. Uh. Uh. I think. As far as we can, whenever we can, we should try to uh, make friends with people, even if uh, we lose some nameless crewmen. Um, I think he said the Spothy were part of the original alliance as well. So, for that reason, I think we should go ahead and, you know, forget that we lost some crew members. So, I'm just going to say, hi, friend. We come in peace and mean you no harm. Are you sure? Because your statement is often just a more polite way of saying, Attention, alien vessels! Identify yourself or be destroyed! In the Nealon, I am Spotty Captain Rico of the Void Ship Star Runner. A senior in this planetary system as part of the powerful Earth Tower, the Star Force, which our master, the Earth One, established here to make sure the Earthlings don't do anything to Ricky. Oh. Uh, okay. Hmm. He doesn't seem especially interested in the Urquan, though. This is sort of a crazy alien, I'm not gonna lie. Like, but it is quite entertaining, I'll admit it. I don't know, what are you doing here on Pluto? About 20 years ago, this region of space was dominated by a loose confederation known as the Alliance of Three Stars, which was composed of the aliens native to these parts who did not want to be enslaved. They made a valiant effort against the superior Earthman forces. It even looked like they might miraculously defeat the combined Earthman armada, right up to the point at which the Earthman totally defeated, indeed annihilated them. Uh, okay, so what are you... what are you doing on Pluto? When the Earthman armada entered the system to subjugate formerly the Earthlings, the Earthman presented the humans with the standard slave options. Join the hierarchy as combat roles and retain some autonomy, including the right to travel through space or become a fellow species and return to free atomic savagery on the surface of their homeworld and placed for all time beneath an impenetrable force shield. The humans chose the latter option and so were swiftly imprisoned on the surface of Earth. But the Earth One didn't have them to obey the restrictions, so they chose a small group of heresy combat starships from the inlet and spotlight to create the so-called Earth Guard and station them at a base on Earth's moon. Uh, I don't want to do angry. I mean, he kind of answered the question. Because with each passing day, we grew more and more worried about the sneaky earthlings making a surprise attack. But the internet kept telling us that it was impossible since the earthlings had no ships or weapons whatsoever. That made us feel a bit better, but when the internet left again, we grew fearful and decided to make a strategic redeployment to Mars. Later on, we decided it would be prudent to relocate to Jupiter's moon, Ganymede, then later Saturn's moon, Titan, and finally here to Pluto. Uh, <laughs> so they just get easily started. They're like sand people. Uh, but they didn't come back in greater numbers. What happened to the Ilrath stationed in this system? The Ilrath contingent were supposed to be the toughest ridge crest, uh, the most rigid flipper, no, ah, uh, yes, the backbone of the Earth Guard Force. But they departed the system on the mass not long after the last Earth Hundred that vanished from this region of space. 
They claimed to have received a direct order from their gods of evil and darkness, who had grown dissatisfied with the Inrap's passivity and wanted them to kill or at least torture someone soon. Personally, I believe they just got bored and went off to have some fun. Mm. When do you expect the uh, Ilrath to return? Well, when they were pushing up into hyperspace 18 years ago, we asked them that very question, and I think they said something to the effect of real <laughs> 18 years ago, huh? Uh, what is happening at the base on Luna, then? We decided that if the Earthlings figured out we had abandoned the base on Luna, they would be more likely to try something sneaky. So, we rigged up some old Cirrus androids and ordered them to drive around on the lunar surface in bundles, endlessly pushing around the same pile of dirt. In addition, we connected the base's local radio transmitter to an audio Melnorme fun rum called Winky's Happy Night, hoping they would think we were still there. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I think this guy and his alien race is hilarious. What happened to the other Spothy ships? Over the past years, it became necessary to redeploy strategically some of our Earth-powered forces to our homeworld in case of a sudden surprise attack by a vicious, unrelenting alien race which we Spothy call the ultimate evil! <laughs> this guy is super entertaining. I well, I have to admit, this is hilarious. Uh, how many crew do you have on board? Seven, that is to say, scores, and perhaps even hundreds of my brethren stride the through the corridors of this specially modified, super-efficient, mass destruction oriented starship, which could lay seeds to an entire planetary system, should we choose to do so, which, fortunately for you, we have decided not to do today. Okay. Or what is the ultimate evil? And yet, the ultimate evil remains largely unmanifest, and its powers and exact intentions are still a bit obscure, since it lurks just outside the range of even the most sensitive and long-range detectors, which we feel gives conclusive evidence as to the ultimate evil's nefarious intent. Um, it sounds like they may have just imagined it. They're very paranoid. Why are you still here, Captain Griffo? Since it was our most powerful and unforgiving master, the Orkan, who stationed us here, we knew it would be grossly stupid to disobey him completely, but we decided it would be okay to send just one ship home. We used one of our most ancient and solemn rituals, one happy, to pick the lucky ship. Then, some months later, we decided that it wouldn't really hurt if we sent one more ship home. And then later we sent another, and then another. Well, you get the idea. Alas, as fate would have it, when the final ritual was performed, I, the ritual, was left here alone. For as even the most immature in wrestling knows, there must always be one spotter who picks the shot up from step. <laughs> uh, hundreds, come on. I am undone. You are far too clever for a poor stuffy like me, and now I must submit to your superior alien intellect. I guess I am not revealing any truly important secrets if I tell you that each of my species in lunar class of board ships typically holds 30 stuffy crewmen, so at present, my vessel, the Star Runner, is not up to full complement. Due to the needs of my homeworld in their resistance against the ultimate evil. And in fact, my vessel is somewhat understaffed right now, seeing as how I am the only stopper on board, which is a bit frightening, as I am sure you can understand. Hmm. Uh, uh, where are the Urquan now? So that all we know is that immediately after the subjugation of the last alliance race, the Yehat, I think, the Earthhorn doubled their dreadnoughts and departed from the edge of the galaxy, commanding us to obey the slave laws or fetch their wrath when they returned. 
Yeah, it honestly seems like uh, the Urquan went to uh, abandon this section of space to go fight something else. Do you know anything about the other alien races? What do you mean, Blaze of Glory? What happened to the Shofixti? The Shofixti were half a serial, as you know, having been uplifted by the Yahat just a few decades before the start of the war. Given their habit of detonating those suicidal so-called glory devices in combat, it came as no particular surprise to me when, upon the arrival of the Orphan Primary Task Force at their homeworld, the Shofixti caused their son to explode in a colossal supernova, destroying the entire planet. <laughs> what about yourself, Flippo? Me? You mean me, personally? Well, I come you to ask! I was born a poor green in cutting, the youngest child of a family of 18,487. My male parents had to work hard to support us, very hard, but each of my brothers and sisters and I tried to to help out to make ends meet. The female parent was kind and sweet to all of us. Why, she won't even call me by name! She said, What a treat, a golden memory. I swiftly matured into a fine example of my species with my parents' assistance. Achieved independence, specifically they pried me from the door jam and rolled me into the street. Thus prepared, I set out to make my fortune. I had great dreams in those days. Yes, great dreams! I knew that someday I would be vastly rich, wealthy enough to afford a large, well-fortified mansion. Surrounding my mansion would be vast tracts of land through which I could slide at any time I wished. Of course, one can never be too sure that there aren't monsters hiding just behind the next bush. So I would plant trees to climb at regular, easy to reach intervals. And being a spotty of the world, I would know that some monsters climb trees, though often not well. So I would have my servants place in each tree a basket of correct stones, not too heavy. Not too light, just the right size for growing at monsters. I was thinking about what color the stones would be painted. Aqua, mauve, or magenta. When a vessel from a cart came careening down the street outside my house, I did not be unconscious. When I awoke, I was aboard the void ship Star Runner headed for Earth. Apparently, I had been out of my head for quite some time after the accident, and with the assistance of some kind strangers, had been relieved of my hands and convinced to join the Navy. Well, I have been unpleasantly employed for the last 25 years. <laughs> Uh, the galaxy teams with threatening monsters. Are you happy here, alone and vulnerable? How true, Captain, how true! In truth, just between us, during the past seven years, I have been quite ill at ease, and yet now I find myself enjoying your company. This witty dialogue and the presence of your huge, powerful, death dealing starship, which, being my friend, you would certainly feel compelled to use in order to save me from any hostile life forms with death. Hmm, I'm sure you'd feel a lot safer if you were uh, with us. Come on, Fifo, join our fleet. Happy days and jubilation! I discard all prejudice and hesitation and accept and celebrate your offer of protection and your undying commitment to my well-being. I must wax melancholy for just a moment though. And make sure you understand that any other spotty ships we meet at large in the galaxy are not going to be quite so responsive to your friendly gestures and myself, since they bear more heavily the yoke of Urquan in enslavement and are also apt to talk themselves out of the line with a totally under alien, which I, having been left here alone, cannot do. Welcome me aboard, Captain. Excellent. 
Got our first alien recruit, and he's a complete uh, insane paranoid. <laughs> uh, I guess if I click this, do I go to roster? Yeah. One out of 30 there. Interesting. Alright, so I'm going to call it quits for this... Uh, for this video, there was uh, I did not expect all that plot dump to happen right there, but uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later, folks. <laughs>